Hey guys, welcome back to the studio. Today we're gonna to be creating a landscape using diagonals, which is one of my biggest tips to help improve your landscapes. And so I talked about that last week in part one. So if you haven't watched that, go watch that. And then this week is gonna be part two and we're gonna create and use diagonals in our landscape today. And we're gonna be using watercolors for today. And let's get started. Okay, materials for today. Um, I am using, so we're gonna be painting this beautiful landscape today. It's gonna be fun. Um, but I am using this tone tan paper um, and it's 80 pounds. So it holds up okay with watercolor. Um, ideally like 110 pound paper is better for watercolor. So um, it does kind of crinkle slightly and I have to be careful with how much water I use on it. But um, I'm using this just because I kind of wanted this nice um, toned look to it. And then, um, yeah, so I decided to use this today. So that's what I'm using. And then watercolor palette is Winsor Newton, which I will link below. I'll also link this below as well. And then, yeah, I think that's it. I have this glass. Um, it's just a picture frame that I actually mix um, my paints on now because I've filled this with other tube paints that I've put in here. So that is today's setup. Okay, so last week we were talking about how to put diagonal lines into your composition subtly um, to really help draw the viewer's eye into the painting. So today we're gonna do a desert landscape using um, diagonal lines to really kind of draw us into the painting. And so this photo um, that I took out in the desert here, um, had these mountains in the background, but they're kind of hard to see. You almost actually can't even see it because my iPhone didn't really pick it up. Um, but in person, there's these really pretty um, light purplish mountains behind the desert um, way off in the distance. And so I'm kind of drawing those back there right now. And then I'm just gonna put in um, some cactuses here. And there's all this kind of, uh, just some different brush and plants and all this stuff. So I'm just kind of doing little tiny sketch lines right now, um, keeping it nice and loose and somewhat messy. Some artists, I think, um, have the perfectionist side to them with their personality, and I am, am not um, one of those where everything has to be perfect. I am more of the the messy, messy artist. And so I like keeping things loose and and kind of sketchy. Also gonna just lightly draw in um, some cloud lines here. I think I kind of want that. Okay, now here comes where I put in the diagonal lines and so I'm gonna kind of have one that's coming out this way. And then just lightly diagonal line this way. Draw some more little tiny scraggly bushes in there. Okay, so for composition now, this looks pretty good. I have this nice leading line with the diagonal coming back into over in here. And I'm also gonna kinda have this side be more of my focal point um, using the rule of thirds, which we'll talk about in a later video. But using the rule of thirds, I'm kind of using this as my focal point area and kind of gonna make even that cactus just slightly, slightly bigger. So that one kind of stands out there. Okay, now that I have this lightly sketched in, I'm gonna go over to my watercolors and um, using a flat brush. And so because of my tiny little palette here, I also pull on some other colors in here where I should be mixing. Um, and so I use actually just a glass um, frame to mix my, my paint on because I don't really have any more room on my palette. So I'm gonna come over here and grab, I have an orange up here. Um, that I'm gonna use and yeah so 
grabbing an orange and I'm gonna come in here with this and just kind of lightly put this in. I'm gonna also paint my mountain back there right now. And so again, it was a light purple. So I'm gonna kind of mix up um, a purple here. And I'm actually letting that orange that I had mix into it a little bit just to kind of tone it down slightly. Dab my brush. Yeah, that's kind of like a nice muted. I'm gonna maybe grab a little more color into that. Because working with this toned paper already kind of tones the color. So it looked a little too too gray. So just keeping it nice and loose, getting that on there. I'm gonna come use my finger down here just to um, kind of blend that in a little bit. And then So while this is wet, I'm coming back with the orange and getting that in there so that I don't have that harsh line. Okay, that looks pretty good for right now. I'm gonna rinse out my brush and I'm gonna kind of come in this um, foreground area and add a little bit of like a deeper rust, rust red, orange. So when I start mixing my colors, I like pulling um, other colors that I already have out into them um, because I think it really kind of unifies your painting more um, to kind of always pull in other colors that you have out. And so that's why I'm kind of pulling in a little bit of that um, purple that I already had on my palette because I knew that that would darken this nicely. So I love using downstrokes. I think it has just such a nice um, dimension to them, along with using um, horizontal strokes as well. Okay, I'm gonna come mix up a green, and I need this to be a dark green because um, the cactus in the photo almost look black actually. And so I'm just pulling out um, my different greens, but now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that red that we just had and mix that in to kind of tone it down. And I'm even gonna grab a little bit more red to really start to darken this green. I'm even gonna throw some blue in there. And that's looking nice and dark now. Yeah, really dark. Okay, I'm gonna kind of dab off some of that excess water because I'm gonna come in here um, and check first to make sure your paper's dry. Mine's slightly wet, so I'm gonna give it just a second more um, because we're gonna come in and do the cactus. And so you don't want your paper wet because these cactuses do not want to bleed into your mountain. We need them to stand, stand in the front and not blend into there. So I'm gonna come in with this right now and just put a few um, bushes in the foreground. Kind of doing some fun, just using the real tip uh, edge of my, my brush. Some fast little marks. Okay, that's dry enough that I can come in here now and Get these cactuses. And so um, using the flat brush to do cactuses are, is so nice because it's just doing like one stroke and you get 
You get majority of the cactus down there. So now I'm gonna kind of take some of this dark too and just kind of blend it in back there. So this was still slightly wet, so I'm gonna let that dry a little bit more and then come back over with one more pass on those cactuses back there. Okay, while we're waiting for that, I'm gonna come in and do the sky. And so um, I said at the beginning that for materials, I have um, some gouache and just some white because I'm working on a toned paper um, and with watercolor, you don't have a white. So I'm gonna put some gouache down so that I can have a, a nice kind of light blue in here and then also make some clouds as well. Okay, I'm gonna come rinse my brush out and because I have some white out here, I'm gonna actually grab a little bit of uh, my yellow. And so I'm gonna add a little more gouache down. So with these diagonal lines, I'm making sure too that that's kind of where I'm adding this nice highlight again to help kind of lead your viewer's eye into your painting. Um, I put a little bit more on this side too, but notice I'm kind of shying away from doing anything over here because um, again, I'm kind of wanting my viewer's eye to kind of come into about this, this part of my painting. Okay, I'm gonna do um, a little more white and I'm gonna put that back in here, kind of like it's the sun setting. And I still had a little bit of that yellow on my brush, but not, not a ton. Brush is a little too dry. call that good on the sky so right now too again we have this nice movement coming this way and then we have a nice light part kind of where our sun is setting right there too okay I'm gonna wash out my brush and come back and last thing I'm gonna do is just redefine these cactuses because again they kind of some of them blended into the mountain a little bit and since I have a little white out too I might add a little um, highlight onto those two after so first I'm gonna grab just my green again. I'm gonna kind of remix into that. Make sure it's nice and dark. If you are using a flat brush, it probably would be easier to do the arms on the cactus with um, like a tinier round brush, but I am just lazy and using the corner of this brush, but um, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, there's definitely some times where 
I messed up because it's a little too <laughs> too thick and then I wish I would have just used a smaller brush or not a smaller brush but just changed to a round brush instead of trying to use <laughs> a square brush. Okay, adding a little bit of this green um, into the foreground as well. And just putting a few spots here and there. I'm using my finger to soften um, those marks because I don't want them to be harsh and stand out. So if you ever need to kind of soften them, just lightly tap over them with your finger. Okay, you know, I think I'm gonna add just a little more kind of like that nice sandy gold, you know, deserty color in here. And so I'm gonna use um, the gouache. I'm trying to think what colors I wanna grab here. Yeah, that's kind of a nice fun color in there. I'm gonna darken it slightly. Actually, I'm gonna do one last thing. I probably, you know, I think artists, that's probably one of their best phrases to say is I'm gonna do one last thing. And it's like, you know, 20 minutes later and they've said it five, 10 more times. Okay, but the one last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a highlight on these cactuses. And so I'm gonna come over and um, grab some of that green I had and mix in um, some yellow. I'm gonna just test this color real fast. Yeah, okay, so that's a nice light green. So I'm gonna come over and just lightly that there. And then I'm gonna also add it into That looks good. Rinse out my brush. I probably could keep going with this, but I'm gonna stop myself and say, that's good. And I hope you guys saw how taking um, a reference photo that didn't necessarily have diagonal lines with it, um, but kind of adding them into in there to kind of really help, help draw your viewer's eye into the painting. Thanks guys for following along in today's video. I hope you enjoyed creating that landscape and being able to see how I use diagonals in my pieces to really help draw the viewer's eye into my painting. Um, and just even kind of being aware of that now will really help improve your paintings drastically. Um, if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I will see you guys next week.